The Seattle Seahawks, the once storied franchise and one of the most iconic teams of the 2010, are now completely stripped of every single piece of the Legion of Boom era. It started with the actual Legion of Boom in the secondary, then Russell Wilson, although they do have Pete Carroll in a quote unquote advisor role in the front office but keeping the old guy who used to run things around which a new guy that now runs things typically doesn't turn out well but now to actually summarize the 2023 season so the seattle seahawks i'm gonna quote warren sharp's summary here because i think he does a much better job than me if it's hard to process big picture thoughts about the seattle seahawks immediate past or present, that's not your fault. It's their fault. They're as close to middle of the road as any team in the NFL. Last year, they were one game above 500 at 9 and 8, went 8 8 and 1 against the spread. In the last three years, they are just one game below 500. They are just two games below 500 against the spread. Pick a week. Will Seattle win? Flip a coin. <laughs> Will they cover the spread? Flip a coin. <laughs> and that's why it's so difficult to predict the Seahawks season last year. Because they went nine and eight, the same record they went the year before and still missed the playoffs on a technicality tiebreaker situation. And to be honest, even if they would have snagged that seven seed playoff spot over the Packers, unless they beat the Cowboys, I'm not sure how much better I would have felt about this team. And when I did my uh, offseason questions video, what? two weeks after the season ended, I really couldn't put my finger on what the hell happened. I even asked my Seahawk fan friends to try to explain this to me. They couldn't tell me what happened. Like, oh, well, I'm just trail off, I'm just trying, no injuries and you know, the coaching. And no one could give me a straightforward answer. But the Seahawks gave us all the answer and said, yeah, it was all Pete Carroll's fault. Get him out of here. And now they're bringing in Mike McDonald. For y'all unfamiliar with the name, he was the defense coordinator for the Baltimore Ravens who were I would say arguably the best defense in football last year, but I don't think that's an argument, right? I'm pretty comfortable saying they were the best defense in football last year. Just look up the numbers yourself or wait till the AFC North uh, preview I do for the Ravens. We'll cover them there. So he comes in. Now the youngest coach in the NFL, head coach, obviously. But the more interesting hire to me is offensive coordinator Ryan Grubb, who comes from Washington, who we'll get to shortly. We're going to skip the what's more likely make the playoffs or miss the playoffs, number one pick, whatever, because I think that's hard to do with rookie head coaches and a rookie offensive coordinator. We have no idea what this team is going to look like, if we're being honest. A lot of these pieces on the team look the same. And me personally, you're just not going to convince me that Pete Carroll was the only thing standing in the way of them maximizing this team. That's just a tough sell for me. But I want to start with Ryan Grubb's offense. So like I said, he was the offense coordinator at Washington last year. Not the commanders, the Washington Huskies in college. Set aside schematics for a second. That offense featured Michael Penix Jr., Roma Dunze, Troy Fontenot, Rosen Rosegarden, Jalen Polk, Jalen McMillan. That is what seven nfl players out of 11 and also their running back dylan johnson who added in 16 tugs himself a lot of nfl talent on that roster granted everyone in the nfl is an nfl talent by definition but the talent advantage he had on a weekly basis if we're gonna hold that against michael Penix as we're doing his draft process then we got to kind of hold it against Ryan Grubb too, right? And now we can get to the schematics of it. Without getting too granular, Ryan Grubb's offense was based a lot on, hey, I have wide receivers who can just go win if I ever get in a jam. And formation and concept wise, since these hash marks are so absurdly big in college, I'm just going to take advantage of all that space I have over there if I'm on the far hash. So if I can get Roma Dunze with over 50 yards of space to himself to the right of the formation why would i not do that sure let's do that and that part is the harder part to see what's going to be able to transition over because obviously the hash mark thing not the same in the nfl and obviously gino's a baller don't get me wrong but is how do i put this is gino as good of an nfl quarterback as michael Penix was a college quarterback i hope that makes sense like michael Penix was what second in heisman voting last year in my opinion should have won it but story for another day is gino smith second best quarterback in the country i don't think so 
And I love Geno, but I don't think so. Can you build an offense around, I have DK Metcalf, I have Tyler Lockett, I have Jackson Smith and Jigba, we're just going to put them on one side of the formation and tell them to go win? Nothing I've seen so far from any of those guys convinced me that you could do that reliably as a set for your offense. DK would be the best argument for that. But again, what metric do we have that that is reliable game after game, week after week for something that you are going to be able to do? The flip side, though, is that on the other side of the ball, Mike McDonald's job is to maximize everything he can get out of this Seahawks defense. And if you look at this Ravens defense last year, they were the best defense in the league, and I'd argue they did not have the best defensive personnel in the league outside of Roquan Smith and Kyle Hamilton. Now, as far as who's the Roquan Smith replacement on this team, ah, that, that one's rough. Sign Jerome Baker, I'm assuming the idea is that it's going to be him. Best of luck with that. But I look at this secondary. Devon Witherspoon is listed as their nickel corner. He's not really a nickel corner. He's more so a just put me somewhere and let me play football corner. And that's as close to Kyle Hamilton as they're going to be able to get. Mike McDonald is really good at simulator pressures, which in layman's terms is if you overload one side of the line, the offensive line is going to shift their protection that way because they're like, oh, damn, here come the defense blitzing. We got to go that way. But in a simulator pressure, you pretend that's where the blitz is coming from. They drop. The blitz comes from the other way in shortest terms possible. And the Ravens led the league in sacks by doing that. With Jadavion Clowney, Kyle Van Noy, and Justin Matabike was incredible, but that's the only all-pro level pass rusher they had on that team. If we're trying to manufacture an all-pro out the Seahawks defense, specifically in that front seven, your best bet is going to be Byron Murphy by like week 10. I know it's just preseason, don't overreact, but he looks pretty much how he looked at Texas where he's throwing grown men out the way left and right. Looks pretty damn impressive. He's going to have the rookie struggle because rookie struggle is what they do. But eventually, he's going to be able to fill that role. So in short, the Seahawks season this year is a mixed bag for me. If they make the playoffs, I would be stunned. It would be because I make a case for both. If the Seahawks make the playoffs, it'll be because... Von Witherspoon was able to play the Kyle Hamilton role. Byron Murphy won defensive rookie of the year. And Ryan Grubb's offense translated to the NFL, or he was able to translate it to the NFL way better than any of us could have guessed. If they miss the playoffs, it will be because the college offense was a little too goofy for the NFL. The young head coach couldn't put his defense together in just one year. And also they're at best the third best team in their own division. <laughs> So at best, we're talking sixth or seventh seed, which is what they were fighting for last year. So essentially, we're asking them to be either the same record or one game better without Pete Carroll. If I had to lean one way, it will be missed the playoffs. But again, with the Seahawks, you never know.